how to get R2R deals through letting agents. On this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step exactly what you need to do to get rent-to-rent -rent deals. Letting agent R2R deals. This is one of the holy grail. I know a lot of you really struggle with this, so I've decided to do a video dedicated to guiding you through step-by-step step exactly what you need to do to get deals. If that sounds good, you know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so that you get notifications every single time I release material. Okay, so look, there's two main ways to get rent to rent deals. The first way is direct to vendor, i.e. direct with the home owner. The second way is through letting agents that have a massive stock of deals ready to go. Naturally, it can be harder or people tend to find it harder to get the deals through the agents. But I love agency deals because if you can get them on side, they've got a whole market, they've got a whole client base of people you can tap into. To give you an example, the biggest agent in my area manages over 3,000 properties. So how many percent of those do you need to make your business? So let's get into it. First things first, you've got to get set up correctly. You've got to have the right professional image for these agencies to take you seriously and let you get on board. So if you've not got a website, if you've not got a professional image, if you're still using Simon, 54746-1995 at hotmail.com, forget about it. That's not going to cut it with these agents. So the first thing you've got to do is get set up right from day one. And I've actually got a video guiding you through that process as well. I will post it in the description below. Go check that video out. And I also give out a free 12 steps checklist to getting set up correctly. If you're finding this of value, all I ask is that you hit the subscribe button right now, comment below with any questions you've got. So step number two is your setup. You're an official rent to renter. You've got your company. It's looking good. It's feeling good. Next thing, a great place to start is on Rightmove. And what you want to do is you want to have a look at the properties that are being marketed to see which landlords are advertising their properties to let. Then what you'll need to do is pick up the phone and call these agencies to see if you can arrange a viewing. Now you're going to get tons of objections here. We don't do company lets. You're a new business. The landlord wants a family. And what you're going to need to do is navigate your way through those to the viewing. The only objective of this call is to get the viewing. Don't overshare, don't oversell, don't talk yourself out of it. Get around the property and then when you're face to face with the agent, you're gonna be far better positioned to build rapport and build momentum with that agent. Now I know what some of you are gonna say, yeah, but Simon, aren't I wasting my time? I don't wanna mess people about. Yeah, that's fine and I get that, but trust me, right? Trust me, people don't know what they don't know. Once you're around the property and you can build rapport, you're much more likely to get the agent on board. But hey, what's the worst that could happen? You're building your connections, you're building your experiences, and you're finding out who's open to it and who's not. Number three, you've got the viewing. How do you approach it? Well, look, personally, on viewings, especially with agents, my main primary, primary goal is just to build rapport. And the main reason for that is, as I've said, they've got a massive stock of properties. So if this one doesn't work, maybe another one will. People do business with who they like. So I wanna build rapport, find out how long they've been doing it, if they enjoy it, what they think to the market, you know, maybe which areas they recommend and build a little bit of a relationship with the agent. You wanna look at the property, see the condition of it and find out the landlord's situation to see if they would be open to a long-term let. Assuming they are and that the property is suitable, don't wait, make an offer. Step four, so many people dwindle, dilly and dally, 
wait around, try and do really complicated offers of what works need doing. And this can be one of the most frequent ways of losing agents. So what you wanna do is if you decide this property works for you, you wanna make an offer which simply comprises of the rent and the term, that's all. Once you've confirmed that, you can move on to the other bits. Step five, the first thing the agency is gonna do once your offer is accepted is ask you to pay a holding rent, pay it. Don't delay, because as soon as you've paid that, they'll take the property off the market and they're gonna take you much, much more seriously. A little extra tip here is that recently, or not so long ago, should I say, there's a tenant fee ban. This means that letting agents can no longer charge sort of single let or um, personal people renting properties any fees. They can, however, charge companies, but they don't all know this. So if the agency wants to charge them a company let fee, four or £500, just pay it. If they're charging you holding rent, so um, you know a contribution to the first month's rent, just pay it. As soon as you paid it, the property's yours and they're invested in making this work. Step six, your offer's been accepted, you've paid the fee, now it's time for the application process. And I'm not gonna lie, this is a lot more complicated with agencies compared to your landlords. So one of the biggest things you're gonna have to overcome is your affordability. And typically, agencies require tenants that's us in this case, to earn 36 times the monthly rent. So if the monthly rent is a thousand pound, they're gonna to wanna to see that you are earning 36 X that, 36 grand. Now, I do have to say, if you can't show this, um, you will need to provide a guarantor. If you can't provide a guarantor, you're gonna be much better off going direct to vendor. And below, I'm gonna post a video where I guide you through how to get rent to rent deals through direct to vendor. If you can't show 36X your average rent, if you can't provide a guarantor, you pretty much might as well focus on direct to vendor. The only exception to this is if you can find an agent that really connects and likes you. I've actually had a situation in my business where the agent didn't do any checks on me because they liked me, they trusted me, they'd seen other things I was up to, and that was that, but that is rare. Another objection you're likely to encounter at this point is that you are a new company. If you are, don't try and lie or whatever you're doing, it's right there, black and white, on the company's house. All you're gonna have to be able to say is, look, we're a new company, we won't pass the checks, but I'm able to offer a personal guarantee. Number seven is gonna come down to the final negotiating and the clauses of the agreement. So look, you found a property, you've had your offer accepted, you've paid the holding rent, you've now passed the application. Now is the time in my experience where you then wanna go through the finer details in terms of the terms. If you do this too soon, you will get pushed out the door. If you do it too late, you will come across like you are changing the goalposts. So there is an art to this, but now's the time when you wanna talk about rent-free periods, who's doing what, if there's any works that need doing, and making sure that you fine tune those bits. So what I typically would do is at the time of the viewing, if there's anything that screams out like a big stain on a carpet, I would ask the agent, what are you thinking with that? so that they're aware of it. And then I wouldn't really bring it up till this point where I would say, oh yeah, by the way, what are we doing with the carpets? Oh yeah, by the way, you know, it's gonna take me a couple of weeks to do XX and X. Can we work that into the agreement? Number eight is contract time. So this is when they're going to send you the agreement. Now, typically they're going to send you a company let agreement. And the thing with this agreement is it assumes you are a company letting the property on behalf of your employees. And we know that is not the case. We need to make this clear. So what I typically do is as soon as I see the agreement, I say, yeah, it looks great. We normally have to make a few amendments. I'll get back to you shortly then you're gonna to need to go through this agreement carefully and make any changes or additions. And I'll give you one example of a change. It's not legal advice, but just from my experience. 
Company lets will often have a sublet clause in there which say you are not allowed to sublet the property and of course that's exactly what you're going to be doing. So make sure you get that removed and make sure you've got the correct termination clauses in. Once again, I can't give legal advice, um, but if you want to reach out um, Instagram at Simon Smith Online, I can point you in the right direction for sure. Last but not least, step number nine is keys day. And until you sign on that dotted line and get the keys, please, whatever you do, do not take anything for granted. When you get the keys, please make sure that you do get a recent gas cert, you do get an EICR, you do see the EPC, because these are documents that you are going to need. If it's a HMO, make sure you see the license. The amount of times I've spoken to people and they've said, yeah, it's a HMO, but there's no license or the license is only for five rooms when really they've been sold it as a seven bed property. It's insane. So make sure you get the documentation, get the keys, and now the real work starts. So that's it from me. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please do subscribe to the channel, comment below with any questions you've got, and I will see you in the next video.